Hey, Vinyl Community, Mark again from Sound Masters, talking all things vinyl as always. I have another phono stage to review for you today, and today we're looking at the Manny 2, which is this little device here by a company whose name is spelled S-C-H-I-I-T. And yep, you guessed it, it's pronounced exactly as you would think it might be. So for the duration of this video, to avoid any potential flagging of the YouTube algorithm in a negative way, I won't be pronouncing the name of this company out loud. But you know, it's a pretty familiar brand out there. They've been going since 2010 and the original Manny was released in 2014. And it's an incredibly affordable phono stage. But for a phono stage under $200 at the time of recording this video, can it deliver the goods? Let's find out. The Manny 2 is the latest incarnation of what has become one of the most popular affordable phono preamps out there on the market. And it's easy to see why when you consider what you get for a preamp that's less than $200. And you know what? The company themselves, they're pretty confident in their abilities, stating on their marketing spiel here right at the beginning that the Manny 2 is simply the highest performance affordable phono preamp period. That's a pretty bold statement, so I'm looking forward to getting into the details and ultimately hearing how the Manny 2 sounds. On face value, when you look at the front panel of the Manny 2, nothing has particularly changed from the Manny 1, the original. You've got the same clean front panel with just the logo and the power light on the other side here. Very nice and clean, very nice compact box as well. This measures just five inches wide and less than two inches tall. As I've stated in other preamp reviews, I'm always looking for great value, compact, fantastic sounding hi-fi gear because space comes at a bit of a premium within my home. I recently reviewed the Moon 110 LP V2, which is also pretty small, but this is actually a touch smaller, just as wide, slightly less tall, and a lot less deep. So this is good news for compact listening spaces. The back panel also remains basically unchanged. You've got essentially your standard inputs and outputs, your earth terminal, which is of a really nice, high, sturdy quality. And you've got this really handy and really welcome from my viewpoint as well, nice on and off switch, which is a really well-made, sturdy toggle switch. Really good quality, well-built, sturdy stuff. What is noticeably different with the Manny 2 is just how much more control you get on the underside of the unit via the dip switches. So with the Manny 2, you can choose between 33, 42, 48 or 60 dB of gain. Not too much difference here from the Manny 1, a little bit of deviation in some of the exact numbers, but in any case, it's the same range and you can handle all but the lowest of output moving coil designs. Where things are a fair bit different here are the loading options. So you can choose between 47K ohms, obviously for you know all your moving magnet cartridges, essentially. But when it comes to the ohms for more moving coil designs, you've got a little bit more choice. You can choose between between 200 ohms, 47 ohms, or 38 ohms. With the Manny 1, you basically had 47K or 47 ohms, and that was your lot. So it's welcome that you get a little bit more control here. With the PF settings, you can go between 47, 100 PF, 150 PF, or 200 PF. So we've got a great more diverse, wider range of options here, particularly for those moving, moving coil cartridges, it starts to look like a little bit more of a serious contender. And I think it's an impressive range of choice for something that costs under $200. But I think the most welcome addition of all is the addition of a new subsonic filter, which you can switch between 6 dB or 12 dB of passive low frequency filtering to deal with any subsonic issues that your system may or may not have. So all in all, good stuff. No doubt for the price, the amount of control on offer here is incredibly impressive. My only minor complaint is just how complicated it is to get your head around the dip switch arrangements. Even with the user manual, it took me some time to decipher what I needed to do to make the adjustments for my Autophon Quintet Red cartridge. But, you know, in any case, the vast majority of people operating a phono uh, stage of this price point will be using a moving magnet cartridge design. So that might not be such an issue for you. And hey, I got my head around it eventually. It just took a little bit longer with the user manual than say it did with the Moon 110 LP V2, which I recently also reviewed on this channel. I did also find that the Manny 2 was a little bit picky 
in terms of where I could place it to uh, avoid noise. So actually, you know, the company do say in their manual that if you place the Manny too close to any sort of power transformer or the turntable motor, then you will get noise. There's a good amount of gain in this phono stage and you, um, you will get noise issues if you're too close to anything like that. And in an ideal world, you should keep your components as far away from each other as you can manage anyway. My space is quite restricted. And I am actually considering a wider unit at the back of me here so that I can get better separation between components. But because my Project Stereo Box DS2 integrated amp amplifier which is the one that I use behind me here actually um, has the power transformer outside of the main unit I've always been able to get away with putting phono stages on top of the integrated amplifier it wasn't actually the stereo box that caused me the issue it is more the LED turntable light that I had behind me here I could I found that if I placed uh, the Manny too close to the LED light I, I, I did get an element of hum that was obviously coming directly from that light because it was when that light was switched on that I noticed the increase in noise. That said, get the Manny 2 a little bit more distance further apart and I did play with this and got it next to my degritter here on another uh, another tabletop. Once you do that, the Manny 2 is a really nice quiet phono preamp. With the details and specifications all done and dusted, let's get straight into those listening tests. For the listening tests, I reached once again for an album by The Meters called Rejuvenation. I just recently used this on my review of the Moon 110 LP V2 photo stage, and I'm really liking this as a test LP, because of its really nice, appealing, broad mix of funk, soul, and rock. I also picked up a copy of Sly and the Family Stones, There's a Riot Going On, and both of these albums are recent AAA VMP Vinyl Me Please reissues cut by Ryan Smith at Sterling Sound. I compared the Manny 2 with the built-in phono stage on my Project Stereo Box DS2 amplifier and with that Moon 110 LP phono stage. Lastly, I also hooked up my Riga Phono Mini for comparison. I did this because the Mani 2 is actually priced very similarly to Riga's budget phono offering. As an upgrade from the built-in phono preamp, both the Riga and the Mani are superb affordable upgrades. But the Mani definitely has the edge when it comes to excitement and dynamics. The Riga, I find, is very flat and neutral, whereas the Mani pushes the extremities much further, and to my ears, it produces more light and shade to the sound. Some of this is personal taste, but if you don't need the USB output of the Riga and you prefer a little more zest to your sound, then my money would back the Mani too. Compared with the built-in phono stage, the sound stage is significantly wider. The sound broadens so significantly that it immediately sounds closer to hearing a live band on stage. For an upgrade costing less than $200, the Mani 2 is a no-brainer if you're still slumming it with a so-so sounding built-in phono preamp. On the very last track of the meter's rejuvenation, a song titled Africa, the Manny delivered more solid and confident bass. It increased the agility and zest on the percussion parts and added greater clarity across the entire mid-range. Instrument separation became significantly clearer and although it's a bit of a cliche, it really was like a veil was lifted. Comparing the Mani 2 with the Moon 110 LP V2, a significantly more expensive phono stage of course, I did find that the Moon had more confident handle and grip on the low end and it also had a smoother upper mid-range. But these differences are much more subtle than my built-in phono stage versus the Mani 2 comparisons. You know, at least with my setup anyway. When hooking the Mani 2 up with a moving coil cartridge, which in this case was the Autophon Quintet Red, I found the overall sound a little boomier in the low mids, with less of a lively presentation of dynamics compared with the more expensive alternatives, such as the Moon 110 LP or the Project Tubebox DS2. But then again, the Mani 2 is a sub $200 phono preamp, and with that important bit of context in mind, the Mani does a sound job. You know, it's always nice to have that upgrade path as an option. And let's face it, the overall majority of Mani 2 users will be operating a moving magnet cartridge. Still, at least the option's there without needing to buy an entire new phono stage and cartridge all in one big hit. 
there's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek joke in the user manual actually that states and i'll quote the company here it says for most turntables owned by actual mortals that is turntables that use a moving magnet cartridge start with the mani 2 at the factory settings end quote so with all of this in mind, it's time to wrap it up. It's time to conclude this review of the Mani 2 Phono Stage. The Mani 2 is one of the best Phono preamps I've heard under $200. The most immediately noticeable change is how the sound stage opens up. In fact, the stereo imaging is really quite mind-blowing for a sub $200 component upgrade. The overall presentation isn't quite as smooth as something like the Moon 110 LP, but then again, the price difference is significant. Personal taste will play a big part in whether this becomes problematic for you. Those who prefer a smoother, more balanced sonic quality may want to consider pairing the Mani 2 with a warmer sounding Phono cartridge. In my cartridge arsenal, I could achieve this by pairing the Mani 2 with a Shure M97XE, which, compared with any of the Autophon models, is a considerably warmer sounding phono cartridge. As with any hi-fi system, it's often a case of finding the best fit for your system and personal taste. If you're running a moving magnet cartridge and haven't made the leap to a separate phono stage yet, it's about time you got acquainted with the Mani 2. Buy with confidence, I would say, and the Mani 2 definitely deserves its reputation as one of the best budget phono preamps out there. Is the Mani 2, as the company state in their marketing material, the highest performance affordable phono preamp, period? Well, that's a bold statement, but without a shadow of a doubt, the Mani 2 sets the standard at this price point. So that concludes the review. There's a link to the Mani 2 in the description so you can check it out in your own time. Don't forget as well to check out the fantastic discount codes from our sponsors and partners, which include the likes of Groove Washer for all your record cleaning needs, it includes 12 inch for these great record display systems behind me. It also includes inner and outer record sleeves from VSS Vinyl Storage Solutions and a fanta fantastic, fantastic vintage vinyl record store from Vinyl Pursuit for all your online vintage vinyl needs. I do get a small commission that's at no extra cost to you and i appreciate your support if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing and until that next video keep spinning